Okay, I'm here to record this to explain why I'm using this PNG of Gilgamesh, a.k.a. Shiro Emiya PNG and Shiro Emiya Transparent Clip Art Free Download. My brother said that uh, the next time there's a Gilgamesh banner, I have to use this as the art. So if you're wondering why is this PNG, who is clearly not a PNG, on there, it's because of that. It's because of him. Any last words to say, boy? I'm getting bit right now. He's being bit right now. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Thank God. I've been uh, a little bit busy crazy with work, which is why there has not been that many videos on the channel. Even though I really want to do a bunch of them, I was immediately hit with the giant roadblock, which is work. But thankfully, pretty soon, um, it's not letting up at all. But I should find some time to stand aside, probably, hopefully, on Friday. But either way, I was able to find some time now, and I'm going to talk about the upcoming banner that's coming to Fago. That's right, the Gilgamesh banner, as the beginning past Wookie explained. There's one coming up, and it's going to be coming up related to the battle in New York uh, now, if you want to sit. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So that's going to be today's video. Hope you like it. Let's go into it. So, in Battle of New York over on JP, a week later, that's when the Gilgamesh came up. This one started technically on the 15th, but it actually happened on the 14th. Um, the reason is, is because I think we went into maintenance on Thursday, and then it officially started on the 15th, exactly at 1 a.m., I think. So, I don't know, it will probably either be on Thursday or Friday, whichever one, but it should be up pretty soon. This is what's going to feature in here. It's, uh, everyone's favorite Gilgamesh, the two, Caster Gilgamesh, and then the other Gilgamesh, Archer Gilgamesh, on a summon banner. In terms of the actual uh, CEs on here, it's the same as the other ones. You're going to get the Secret Company Assassin, which has some real nice art on it. Uh, Doc K. Quinn and the Galaxy Karamos. Uh, none of them are anything too crazy from what I can look at here. Mm, Demon Immunity one time can potentially probably get a little bit fun. Mm, that's basically where I'm going to say. that They're basically, they're really nice art. And I don't think there's anything too crazy special. I think there's others with debuff immunity ones. I actually don't know. Feel free to tell me if uh, <laughs> if I'm wrong on that one, but I'm pretty sure there is. Uh, not only that, there's also going to be a Gilgamesh Caster's summer outfit will be added to the Da Vinci Workshop. So if you've cleared Fuyuki, you know the deal. You'll get it for free, and if you just can... If you've cleared Babylon, you can get it for free, but if you are just fiending for this outfit, and you want it now, and you give them five mana prisms now, five rare mana prisms for it now, then when you finally do beat Babylon, you'll get refunded those five back. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, and now in terms of the actual banner, we can go over Gilgamesh Caster first. I joke, but this is actually um, one of my favorite versions of uh, Gilgamesh. I think this is the one that actually started to make me like other versions of Gilgamesh that are not the one from Fate's Day Night. Um, Gilgamesh Caster. He is a one quick, three arts, one buster. His first skill, which eventually gets, I think, strengthened. I think it's already been strengthened by the time. Actually, no, I don't think this is in NA at the moment. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, it releases with Lilum Harlot. So this will get buffed later for us. But on JP, this is what it currently is. Charges on MP gauge, increases party critical star generation rate for three turns, and then charges party's gauge. 30% NP, 100% uh, star rate, and then the party NP increase is 20%. Um, uh, pretty sure that just means that's 50% to him then. Yeah, I think that just means it's a 50%. <laughs> I think anyway, unless I'm, I'm misreading uh, something on here, it should be that he charges his own for 30%, and then the party includes him, so that's an additional 20%, so that's a 50% on a 4-star caster, that's kind of crazy, but to be fair, it is Gilgamesh. Uh, once again, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that. Charisma A+, increases party's attack for 3 turns, 21%. It's on a cooldown of 5. Third skill is the Sovereign of Magic Wands, EX. Increases party's arts performance for 3 turns. Increases party's debuff success rate for 3 turns. Arts up, 30%. Debuff success rate, 30%. Cooldown, 6. Passive skills, item construction, false A. Territory creation, A. Divinity, B. First skill is the Append skill for Serving Coin. Why am I going over the first skill? The <laughs> third skill... <laughs> I've been away from doing videos so long I forgot that I don't talk about the first and the second because it's it, the exact same for every single unit in the game. 
<laughs> Third skill, an anti-archer attack damage adds a two because trust no one, not even yourself, even if he's a kid. Um, increase on attack against archer enemies by 30%. And then his noble phantasm is the rank uh, B plus uh, noble phantasm a melamo dinger, dingar, dian. Inger. I'm going to go with Inger because sometimes, I don't know, in ancient languages they didn't pronounce the D was silent. King's Signal Cannon. It's a rank B+. Plus. It's anti-army and anti-fortress. It hits 10 times. It hits percentage is all the numbers you see there. I'm not going to repeat it all. Deals damage to all enemies. Increases party's defense by 20% for 3 turns. And then increases party's critical damage for by 30% for 3 turns. Its damage is 600% at level 1. And if you get them to MP5, which is possible with this one it's 900 percent and then reduces own defense for three turns charges own uh and then his overcharge effect is a defense down by 20 percent and then when you get it to the final level it is 40 percent and like i said before he has a summer outfit which is pretty nifty yes pretty nice uh that's gilgamesh caster i like gilgamesh caster he's a very the one thing that i'll say is that he's a very interesting buff unit because he is a, a a support unit of types obviously before this all he did was increase party star generation which was not great and a lot of his support actually came from this ability here which is just to give 30 percent to arts and then give some debuff success rate and that was basically it along with some party attack but this ability here should make him much better at actually giving support the reason i say he's kind of support related is that this does apply to all of them so it's possible to give your arts up by 30%, which is just 20% off of giving a full 50%. And it's to... Uh, oh, yeah, and it's to the entire party. For a brief second there, I thought for a second it didn't give it to the party. And then it also increased debuff success rate, which if you're going for a specific build that wants to increase debuff success rate, I could see that being as a funny option that you can bring in for that specifically. Or if there's a specific challenge quest. Sometimes when some abilities, when you look at it, I'm like, when the hell would you ever use this? And then the answer is, sometimes it's it helps in a specific challenge quest or fight. It actually comes in crazy clutch. So it's also a good idea to keep in mind and be like, okay, yeah, this is where something like that could be used. Um, yeah, but this skill... It's really, really nice. Not only does it keep its crit star generation, charging his own MP is really nice, and then the party MP is also good, which means you can use him in two ways. You can use him as a support, and then you can also use him to actually just straight up do the Noble Phantasm himself. He should be able to. When it comes to arts and quick, the more hits, the better, and he's hitting a bunch of times on this art. Uh, so he should be able to get the damage in, and also, like I said beforehand, uh... It's not that hard, eh, you know, let me be relative here. It shouldn't be that hard to get copies of Gilgamesh Caster. The reason is that he is a always in every banner type of unit. I was able to casually get him to NP5 and I've never chased him on a, in a single raid up. And I have mine, I don't think mine's actually MP5. I think it's closer to three or four. Uh, I lose track of it uh, occasionally with certain four stars if I'm not always using them. Um, so it should be possible to get his damage up there. It's a really solid unit that you can just use. I think that's the best case that you would want from a 4-star. In terms of AoE casters, I think he's, for the 4-stars, I think he's definitely up there. In terms of the 5-stars, obviously the 5-stars the, uh, the are some amazing AoE <laughs> units. That doesn't mean that you can't use Gilgamesh caster, though. Um, especially for 4-stars. Like I said, he is he would, in theory, be easier to get to than a 5-star. Unless you were joining specifically when there was a free five star ticket and you use it on one of the five star AoEs which would be Sherazade which would be Sherazade or Anastasia. Um actually another thing Anastasia Sher well Anastasia's at least I think arts. Yeah he no I was thinking she was Buster but no she's arts. Uh Sherazade and then Murasaki Shikabu is a limited one so she wouldn't count. Um Point is, I think Gilgamesh caster is pretty cool. Not obviously the top, top, top ones of a five star, but in terms of the four star casters, I think he's probably up there. Let me double check this because after I say that, it's going to turn out that I'm completely forgetting one of the free to play casters um, that are specifically doing what he's doing. Obviously, this is an amazing AOE, but he's Buster. This one, Paracels is actually pretty solid, and he's a three star. But I think he's a, similar to Gilgamesh. I use him a little bit more for supporting Chen Gong than I actually use him in specific arts builds. But I think there is actually probably a way for the crazy dedicated to make him useful in other things like that. 
Eri is more about keeping dudes alive than really being used as like a... She's a very weird support unit. Some people consider her very bad, but I don't think she's that bad. Helena's a really good one, um, but she doesn't have the same... Actually, no, she's a really solid support. This is a charge party NP1. Hmm. I think either way, I could literally look at this and just keep going on forever, but I need to move on to the five star. I'll just stay again. <laughs> it, very good, very solid, and we'll leave it at that. Worth uh, using and very good, especially once we get... Probably in NA, you'll have to wait till he gets that buff if you want to take the full advantage of it. Um, obviously. Um... There will just be other options, but when you get there, he'll be a fun unit to use. And we shouldn't be that far away from it. We're like, what, maybe a year away? <laughs> just wait an additional year. That easy. Let's move on to the next servant on here, which is going to be the main reason anyone's summoning on here. Even though I made this video, uh, I know for a fact it doesn't matter uh, what I have to say about him. They're already going to be going for him. He's Gilgamesh. He's one of the most popular units in the Fate universe itself. He's been in multiple... I think he's actually probably in more games than actually... Mm, does he cameo in more, like, type moon stuff than Saber? No, that's not... That can't be true. That can't be true. Because Saber shows up in the fighting games and he doesn't really show up in the fighting games. But I don't know. He's either way he's promoted. Maybe it's just because I'm thinking he is in Fate Samurai, even though he's called boss there. It's not the same thing. But either way... An extremely popular unit. He is Gilgamesh, the king of heroes. He is an archer, uh, two buster, two arts, one quick. His first skill is the one who saw it all, EX, which used to be charisma. The one who saw it all, EX, increases party's attack for three turns, increases the MP damage of servants, allies with the sky attribute for three turns, and then gain crit stars. The 21% attack, the MP damage to sky servants is, uh, MP damage is 20%. Scars, the stars gained is 20, and the cooldown is a 5, and if you were curious what the skill used to do, just 21% attack. <laughs> An extreme makeover on that one. Golden Rule A increases own MP generation rate for three turns, 50% up on a cooldown of 6. Third skill, the Treasury of Babylon EX, which is an upgrade from Collector EX, increases own critical star absorption for three turns, charges own MP gauge as a 30% charger, and an absorption of 600% on a cooldown of five, so he is guaranteed to basically always get the stars from the first one. And like I said, cooldown of five, cooldown of five, cooldown of six. And if you're curious what this used to be, it just used to be the 600% up. The passive skills are Independent Action A+, Magic Resistance E, Divinity B, and then his third skill is an Anti-Rider Damage Attack Aptitude, uh, which is an increase against own uh, Rider enemies, which I feel like is at a direct call for what he did to my boy, Iskandar, back in Zero. That's actually the reason I don't like Gilgamesh that much, is because I'm a huge Iskandar fan. Anyway... Uh, and this is his, after the interlude, uh, he gets a, a buff here to his Noble Phantasm, Enema, Elish, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that, how does he actually say it in the, Enema, Elish, Enema, uh, Elish, <laughs> sorry if I said it wrong, I can't say it the same way he does it, the star of creation that split heaven and earth. It's an anti-world rank EX. Hits one time because it's all it's going to need. Increases on MP damage by 30% for one turn and then deals damage to all enemies. 400% at MP level 1. And if you get them all the way to MP level 5, that's 600%. If you are specifically... If you go... The overcharge effect it does, deals extra damage to all servant enemies. Except ones with Enema Elish nullification uh, trait given to them. And that is 150% extra damage to servants. At charge level 1, and at charge level 5, it's 200%. Um, and if you want to know who specifically has Enema, Leash, and Nullifications, it is these list of servants. Anyone else, and they are just absolutely eating shit. Um, getting destroyed. Just mon monstrously. Um, and that's Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh will surprise you to hear is really good especially after all the strength things they gave him in terms of working with buster he can work in multiple types of setups if you want to go for the merlin buster heavy crit he's able to do that pretty f uh pretty good if you want to go with uh vicha style of play which requires you to cool lowering these cooldowns all his cooldowns are of uh six or lower so it's not going to be that hard he also has 30 percent. so if you want to uh 
grind with him using Oberon. That's also possible with uh, Double Vich and then Oberon in the back in certain CEs. You can do that with him. You don't even need to always use him with that. You can also sometimes just use him for challenge quests, and that's where this second skill is going to actually come into play. Because during regular times, it's obviously never. This is never going to happen. While you're, while you're like for example doing a lot of ground, this this skill just says like, hey, I have to do one less click, which honestly is pretty good. But when you're going against a boss, this can come in pretty nice because that 50% MP rate can be pretty sweet. Uh, obviously I don't have Gilgamesh, so I don't know how good it is, but in theory you should be able to get at le your MP back way quicker with a 50% MP, um, rate up, a generation rate up, unless his base generation rate is just terrible, which from looking at this doesn't look like it's that bad at all. Uh, so he can really do basically whatever you need him for. If you need him for a challenge quest where you're fighting servants, the one thing I will say is that if you're specifically... In a challenging fight where it is not a servant that is the one being attacked, maybe Gilgamesh doesn't do enough damage. But if you're at any point fighting something that is considered a servant or some of the bigger boss characters, he can deal that 150% pretty easily and that will make up for the fact that he is an AoE uh, NP. Dealing and get that extra 150% should help out. Uh, and I think if I remember right... Yeah, no, okay, it just deals to the NP. Uh... And yeah, this also is really nice because the dudes with the the number of dudes with sky attribute is pretty dang high. As you can see here, there's enough enemies for it to be uh, warranted. So that is Gilgamesh. Uh, in terms of archers, for specifically Buster, he's really good. There's him that you can use. There is uh, Ishtar that you can use, and then there is I think who else do you really use with? There's Napoleon, which is also really good. That's the only one thing that is probably the the one thing that can maybe hold back Gilgamesh is that if you already have a dedicated arc, Tesla is really good, which is also here. If you already have a built-up Buster Archer and you're not the biggest fan of Gilgamesh, then I think you're probably good. The reason is, is that I still think that a lot of those Archer Busters are still really good. I don't think Gilgamesh has 100% like... Mm, if this was 50%, I would probably say like he would be the top one to always go for. But the fact that Ishtar has a 50%er and is able to loop so crazy easily with a lot of her stuff using Vich makes it a case of like, you know, there's improve and there could probably be some improve. There it's mm, I really don't like making anything deliberate on a unit that I do not have and I've already said I don't <laughs> I don't like the character because it makes it seem like I have a bias of some kind. So what I will say is that um all of those archers are really solid and really good, and that includes Gilgamesh. It would be like a four horsemen of archer busters um, to make it so that if you already have one of them and you're already fully dedicated to them, maybe Gilgamesh isn't your kind of path to go to, unless you specifically really love Gilgamesh, then in which case go for him. And like I've also said beforehand, Gilgamesh is a character that is absolutely loved. So the chances of him being buffed in case he, for whatever reason, kind of falls off a little bit is pretty damn high, to be honest. <laughs> Just look at Emiya Archer, and I can show you what they do to characters that are specifically like, um, they refused for Emiya to ever be anything less than good. Look at the amount of strength things that they gave to this man they gave him the ability to switch between buster and arts because a lot of people were saying man imagine he was arts and they said you know what that'd be a good idea and so they gave him an arts np in one of his skills which is hilarious so in that kind of way i see gilgamesh Ash as kind of being like a forever unit in my eyes as like no matter what he's always going to be good if there's ever a case of where he falls off even slightly He's not on a Merlin level where they're afraid he's going to break the game, so they will gladly put him back up into a perch that they see him justifiable. The same thing goes for Ishtar. If there was ever a case of where they thought like Ishtar Archer was falling off, they would keep her up there because it's obviously it's a Rin. Um, at least that's my the way I see it. There are some cases where they haven't done that. Like It took them for a very long time for them to make Saber good, but then once she was good, it was kind of like, damn, she is good. Ku was always really good for the longest time, and then when they actually buffed him, they gave him one of the most. They gave him a really insane buff. The same thing can be said for Hercules, 
And for Ku when he was a uh, caster version. But anyway, that's all speculation. Point is, Gilgamesh is really good. If you're going to go for him, he's a definitely a worthy archer AoE. If you already have some other archer AoEs kind of selt, uh, built up, maybe it's a better idea to kind of hold off. We're going to have a crazy-ass year this year. So, you know, summon with caution. Uh, even though I don't like Gilgamesh, I do like the idea of owning all the Fade Zero units, and I need him to actually... He's, I think, the only one I'm missing. I have absolutely everyone from that Grail War... It's literally just him that I need and that will complete my collection, and it actively bothers me that I do not have him. So, but if I throw a multi at him, I almost, I'm almost guaranteeing myself that the next unit, which is going to be Super Bunyan, that I really like, I'm not going to get, because I'm going to waste all my luck on Gilgamesh. <laughs> Mm, quite a pickle I put myself into. I'll figure it out. But either way, if you're summoning, I wish you guys the best of luck. Um, if you're not summoning... It's a good idea to hold off and start saving. There is plenty of stuff coming up, even in this month alone. Oh my god, that's the JP. Spoiler stuff. Up. But you can see here, Scotty's coming at the end of the month. Which is something, if you're looking to build into Quick, it's pretty good. Uh, we have Morgan coming with the Sea Monsters Crisis. We have Super Bunyan, who I really like, and some people really don't like. And we have Castoria also coming in May. So, be very cautious. Gilgamesh is a really like servant, and he will likely come back at some point. There's always a chance for him to just randomly show up for Thanksgiving, because that's usually units that they like to pick for themselves. So, make the decisions. Summon smart, summon wisely. That's all I have to say on that. So that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. As always, you can feel free to leave a comment about making fun of anything that I've said here, as I've probably said a bunch of weird whack stuff it's really tough to get back and get back into the mood of <laughs> video watching you can tell that maybe my my brain is a little fried in terms of like man i've been dealing with so much work shit and now i have to watch my words <laughs> and i'm like nah, you know what i'm just gonna let myself speak and then I occasionally will say something stupid. So feel free to correct me if I said anything dumb or if something I disagree with so vehemently, I would love to hear your side of it, as always. As long as you're not mean to me. <laughs> yeah, which no one ever is, which I'm very thankful for. And yeah, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll hopefully be back with more videos. Um, for Go related and then not for Go related. Uh, I should be... I've been playing Song Adventure with Zen as we have not had the time to record Shonen Archive, we have plenty of time to record Sonic Adventure, and let me tell you, that's a really fun, really fun time, because both me and Zen really like Sonic Adventure, and I'm prob you probably are very shocked to hear it if you're someone who has never actually played Sonic Adventure and only watched other people play it. Uh, it's loved by me, my brother, and Zen, so it's a fun time, and I can't wait to record more. But either way, end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time, goodbye. Peace.